it's a very complex disorder where everybody has mast cells in their body. In somebody with MCAS, you have the right number of mast cells, but they act inappropriately. Before I became ill, I loved theatre. I'd just trained with the Royal Shakespeare Company um, doing acting and it was just an amazing experience and I used to play a lot of sports, play tennis, um, run half marathons for charity and then I got a job at the Royal Opera House in costume and it was just the most wonderful start to moving to London. I'd always wanted to move to London and it was just the perfect reason. I'd never seen opera or ballet before so being in that environment was just everything that I'd hoped for when everybody else was going out getting drunk having fun and I couldn't sit up without blacking out and then I started dislocating different parts of my body which were seemingly unrelated at the time you know I, I was walking along the one day and my hip dislocated and that was terrifying because suddenly I was I was stood <laughs> which I, I could walk but I couldn't stand still without passing out so suddenly I'm stood in the train station and my leg is not in the socket. And so I found myself having to try and put my hip back into my into the joint and just sit down in the middle of the train station, which was humiliating. Um, but I, I was in agony and it was either that or pass out. And <laughs> I'm better at dealing with pain than being unconscious. I must have tried 10 or 15 times to go back to work. Um, eventually I had a stint of nine months off, managed to go back for a bit, but it was, I mean, it was a struggle. I always remember any opportunity, there wasn't somebody in the room, I'd put my head in my lap just to try and get a bit more energy and not pass out because at that point I didn't realise that the standing was causing me to black out. You know, my work colleagues became very used to just picking me up off the floor and it would be a, a daily occurrence and then we'd all just carry on like nothing had happened and currently a lot of doctors don't know about the conditions don't understand them or don't believe them I was given a diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome and had I settled with that diagnosis I would be in a wheelchair now he said well I think you've got Ehlers-Danlos syndrome which is a connective tissue disorder which affects the collagen in joints and muscles um, and then I was in I had a bright red rash and he said, I think you've got mast cell activation disorder too, and referred me to the relevant specialists to get tested. She said to me, well, it's incurable. You know, hopefully you won't end up in a wheelchair. It was very good that my specialist from the off believed me, which was after three years of fighting the system, that made a really big difference. I, I was so convinced that it wasn't in my head. It was physical. There was something wrong with me. To finally have that confirmed, I was relieved, but also devastated because up until that point, I'd hoped that whatever it was would eventually go away and having that confirmed that it wouldn't go away. I mean, how, how do you come to terms with that at 22? I didn't really realise at the time what that effect would actually have on the rest of my life. You know, being told you have something that's rare and incurable and difficult to treat that that takes its toll and having three years of not being believed but then the reality of I've got a potentially life-threatening condition that I'm going to have for the rest of my life that is only treated on privately which means that I'm going to have huge medical bills for the foreseeable future that was quite scary. If I can raise awareness, then that hopefully means that people, other people won't have to spend three or four or five years getting a diagnosis and won't have to spend, you know, my parents have spent over £10,000 on my treatment, which I'm eternally grateful for and I'm very lucky. Five years on, I am managing to do normal things. I, you know, have built a business I've got amazing friends and family I've got a boyfriend I'm managing to be kind of normal I'm never going to be normal normal but I'm more normal than I I was and I'm not a smoker I didn't really drink you know I didn't do drugs I ate well 
I was out running three times a week and I've got a genetic condition. 